Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Salomon Aeroglide. So the Aeroglide is a new road running shoe from Salomon and the key feature really is that it's got a huge stack of cushioning in the midsole there. It's a fairly expensive shoe, it's £150 in the UK or $160 in the US. It weighs in at 281 grams or 9.9 .9 ounces in my UK size nine, which is really quite lightweight considering how high the stack is on the shoe. It's, it's 37 millimeters at the heel and 27 at the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. So it is a similar level of cushioning to other Mac stack shoes out there, things like the Gel Nimbus and the Nike Invincible. It's got a mesh upper with quite a well padded tongue and collar there to add a bit of comfort to the shoe. And then there's an internal heel counter at the back there to add some stability. You've got a recycled EVA sock liner and then the midsole is made from energy foam which is a combination of EVA and the leffin foams and for the geometry you've got Salomon's R camber rocker which they say is inspired by ski slopes and designed to create a nice smooth transition onto your toes with each step and for the outsole you've got contour grip you've got a full rubber outsole there with really good coverage pretty much throughout the shoe it's quite a thick layer as well so that should be good on the durability front Fit then, absolutely no problems here for me. Ran in a UK eight and a half, which is my size, and I would recommend going true to size. Decent amount of room up front in the toe box. I think the heel hold is really nice. I got good lockdown across the midfoot from the lacing and was really happy with this. This is one of those that had really good step in comfort and yeah, I would recommend going true to size. So I had no concerns at all with the fit of the Aeroglide. It had all the room I needed up top and a good hold around the midfoot and heel. So yeah, very happy with the fit, true to size in this shoe. Onto the run test then, I've done around 30 miles in the Salomon Aeroglide. Mostly easy, occasionally a little faster, mainly on roads, sometimes on compacted gravel paths and park paths, river paths, that kind of thing. Now for the moment I put them on, I really like this shoe. I think they're one of those shoes that you can pick up and they're really easy to slip into and go and run. They feel great on the foot. There's good step in comfort, balanced cushioning in the heel. Again, I think there's nice kind of room in the toe box. They just feel nice and natural on the foot, good disappearing feel. And yeah, I, I found them very, one of those that you could easily look down and go, well, actually, I want to put that one on today because you know it's going to be offer you kind of reliable comfort. I think that also carries over into the ride. This is one of those shoes that you just know you're going to get a kind of a reliably comfortable ride throughout. I could clip along happily for hours in this shoe in zone two, you know, that kind of really low heart rate stuff. I always talk about kind of when you're just enjoying the scenery, running with no particular intent. This is a very, very easy kind of mile eating shoe that I really enjoyed from the get go. Now I think you get some really nice roll through from that Arcamber kind of rocker geometry that you find on this shoe, particularly if you're landing a little bit kind of further up to the forefoot. And overall I think there's good balanced kind of cushioning that's not too soft but nicely protective. It's not the most lively and springy ride, but there is some energy here. You know, essentially for me, I think basically Salomon here has created something like a Hoka Clifton 9 or something like that, you know, a good one at that. You know, it just when you first put it on, you're like, this is a Hoka shoe essentially with the Salomon colors on it. And that's definitely a good thing. So it's got that kind of max cushion comfort, but it doesn't feel bulky, heavy or overbaked. And so although I think it's best and happiest when you're eating easy miles, you can actually go faster in this as well. It can happily kind of clip up a bit, can get into that kind of tempo run sort of territory. Although I think I'd be choosing other shoes to run those kind of faster efforts first, but it has got that capability. To me, it feels well balanced. It's protective without being sluggish. It's cushioned and plush without being kind of lazy and sloppy and overdone. The other thing that I really liked, I also ran in some pretty wet conditions and I think the Conti grip on the outsole coat pretty well. I ran kind of on sort of wet paths, some cobbles as well. And I think it did a pretty good job on durability. I think this is a shoe so far for the miles I've done, it looks like it's gonna be a long laster. Now, if I'm trying to put this into context of some of the other shoes that you might be thinking, what's it like? Yeah, I mean, there's shoes that jump out, like the Socken Endorphin Shift 3, you've got the Hoka Clifton 9. It, to a certain extent, there's like the Hoka Mac 5, I think you could sort of factor in here. I also think, you know, if you go a little bit heavier and a little bit more kind of max cushions, you're thinking about the things like the New Balance More V4, that kind of area, Cloud Monster, this kind of territory is where this kind of shoe sort of squeezes in somewhere on that kind of uh, that timeline. But if you're going to compare it to those shoes, it's lighter and springier and much more agile than the New Balance More V4. It's softer than the Cloud Monster. It's not quite as fast and versatile as the Hoka Mac 5, but it's not far off it. 
And I would kind of say it's at least on par with something like the Clifton 9 and the Endorphin Shift 3, if not better. So I've done 50k in the Salomon Aeroglide, and most of that's been easy running, and I've taken it out for a long run as well of 15 miles. And overall, I've enjoyed using it, but it's not a shoe that's really stuck in my mind or really stood out for me in any real way. The midsole is comfortable, but it's not overly squishy or bouncy or anything like that. It's got a nice feeling on the foot, very balanced feeling, I guess it's fair to say, but it's also a little bit dull, it's fair to say that. But it's obviously very protective, and the rocker is well designed. You can get into a nice sink with the shoe and roll through, as long as you're sticking to fairly easy paces, I found, with it. Like, when I have tried to step up the pace a little bit in the shoe, it's, it's not bad, it's like it's not the heaviest shoe in the world, but it is just quite a big shoe. And, and I think if you're not hitting the sweet spot on that rocker, it does become a little bit cumbersome. And I found when I was trying to progress the pace in the shoe that it just, it just didn't feel that smooth and uh, really conducive to that. Like I said, it's not an exceptionally lively ride, but when you are cruising through longer runs, um, it, it does feel pretty good on the foot. Like I didn't have any problems with it. It kind of disappears a little bit on the foot. Like I say, if you're sticking to quite easy paces, um, it's not a shoe that's very noticeable like some of the other max cushion shoes out there. And on that longer run, I did pick up the pace a little bit in the second half and you know, nothing too quick at all, but just letting my body naturally speed up a little bit as I got comfortable in the run. And it worked quite well for that. But again, it wasn't a shoe that really left a mark on me after that run. And that's not a bad thing for a cushioned cruiser like this. You know, you don't really want it to be too intrusive or anything. But at the same time, I didn't, you know, I didn't finish the run thinking, wow, I've loved that shoe. I want to go out on it again. I just felt, yeah, it's done a good job there. It's protected the legs well. It's not been too heavy, too annoying or anything like that on the run. But yeah, it's not really uh, livened up my life during that run. So it's stable enough for a cushion shoe like this. I've got, I had no concerns at all about stability. Like you can hit the odd thing at the wrong angle with such a high midsole foam. But in general, stability hasn't been a concern for me with this shoe at all. Uh, last point to say, the outsole is really good on the shoe. It's gripped really well for me on very wet days. Uh, I think it's going to be great in terms of durability as well. I think this energy foam is going to stand up to a lot of running the outside is going to be nice and durable so it should be a, a bit of a tank that will last you a lot of miles Overall, I'd say the Aeroglide is a good max cushion shoe. It's not one that absolutely wowed me on any count, but at the same time, I'd be perfectly happy using it for all my kind of easy and long runs. It protects the legs well, it rolls through nicely. It's just not really a standout shoe. And this is an area of the market that now is increasingly laden with lots of good options now. The cushion shoe area, just because foam's got a bit lighter, I guess, there's just loads of shoes that are packing in loads of foam, but are feeling a little bit more exciting underfoot than maybe cushion shoes used to. And so I say a couple of shoes that spring to mind as being quite similar to the shoe. One is the On The Cloud Monster, which is also a very well cushioned shoe, but is a lighter shoe as well, and has a firmer feel than the Aeroglide, and the speed body does make it I think a little bit more versatile. I think if you're looking for a big cushion daily trainer, then maybe the Cloud Monster does have a little bit more versatility if you're going to use it for things like tempo runs and that kind of thing. If you're sticking to easy and long runs, I think the Aeroglide is a touch more comfortable, but I do think it lacks the versatility you can get from the Cloud Monster. It's also quite similar to things like the Hoka Clifton 9, although I do think, again, that's a slightly more versatile shoe. I do think that's a pretty good daily train in the Clifton 9. I've enjoyed using that at a range of paces. And there's also the Socony Endorphin Shift 3, which I think is very similar in lots of ways to this shoe, but I do prefer the feel of this shoe. I found the Shift 3 just really dull on the foot, and even sometimes on easy runs, I found it wasn't that great a shoe to get into a rhythm with, whereas Salomon does work nicely for those long runs. So overall, I'd probably prefer a slightly le less cushion shoe, or a more traditional cushion shoe, something like the Brooks Glycerin 20 or the Saucony uh, Triumph um, 20, which are cushion shoes, but they do work quite well as daily trainers because they, you know, the stack heights aren't immense. They're heavier than this shoe, but I do think they have a little bit more uh, to them in terms of liveliness in the foam in the midsole, and they work a bit better at a range of paces for me if you are looking for you know, a big premium cushion shoe that you can use for a, a nice range of running. And then if you're looking at some of the other big Mac shoes out there, like I think the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 is a slightly better shoe than this for me. It's got a more enjoyable ride. It's it's got similar characteristics to the Salomon in many ways, but it's just a slightly more enjoyable shoe to use for those easier long runs, I found, although it is a little bit more expensive for sure. And there's the New Balance More V4, which is all out rockered shoe with a lower drop than this that's got a pretty dull midsole foam, but again, you can cruise for hours in it at easy paces. It's, a, it's similar to this. I think, I think I prefer the way the rocker works on the Aeroglide a little bit myself, and the More V4 not only is a lot heavier, but feels a lot heavier than the uh, Salomon on the run. So, so yeah, I'd probably lean to the Salomon out of those two, and then there's obviously the Nike Invincible in this category as well, and that's just a big, squishy, very cushioned shoe. Pretty different to most of the Max Cushion shoes out there in that it's not very stable, it's a lot more lively and fun, but at the same time, not always as practical as some of the other shoes if you're going to go jogging on easy runs, just because it is that little bit wobblier underfoot, which isn't always ideal for racking up big miles. So I've mentioned a lot of shoes there. I do think the Aeroglide fits quite nicely into this area of the market as another option there. It's a, it's going to be a durable shoe. It's got quite a subtle ride, a balanced ride, but at the same time, 
uh, I think I'd probably be looking elsewhere myself at just slightly more versatile shoes that also have this level of cushioning and just feel a bit nimbler underfoot. But if you do get a shoe, I think it will serve you very well for easy and long runs in particular. And I do think it's going to be a nice durable one as well. So my verdict then, as daily trainers go, I think Salomon has made a pretty good one here. This is a nicely versatile shoe that I think can cope with a range of runs. It's definitely happiest or I prefer running in it when I'm doing my easy miles and I want to go long and slow. You know, again, I said I can happily run for kind of three hours in this shoe at very low intensity. It's that kind of shoe for me. What it excels at for me is being like a long, slow workhorse of a shoe. And I mean that in the most positive sense of the word. It's really pleasant to run in. It's really easy to clip along in. It's very comfortable on the foot. It disappears. I, I think it does kind of everything that you want an easy day shoe to do. And it has a little bit more sort of higher paces as well. So yeah, really, really good kind of solid, versatile shoe. Price wise at 150 pounds, it's in the mix with some really, really good shoes. And in all honesty, I think if I was only choosing one shoe, I, you know, I think the Hoka Mac 5 still has more versatility. I think that can cope with the kind of runs I've just described, but it's definitely better at kind of faster paces. I still think I would choose the Hoka Mac 5 first. But aside from that, I do think the Salomon Aero Glide represents pretty good value for money. I think it's gonna have good durability. I think a lot of people will enjoy the way this rides for those really nice and easy kind of slow runs. So it's definitely a shoe that I would commend. It's probably not the best shoe I've run in, but I think Salomon has made a really good solid shoe here. That's it. That is our review of the Salomon Aeroglide. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.